this is what I'm starting out with. This was my motivation or my inspiration for this page. I saw this in a newspaper, so I'm just cutting that out as my quote. And I'm going to change it and just put encourage acts of kindness. I thought that was kind of a fun quote. I'm going to be using this stamp set by Stamperia, Christine Radovan, Radovan, I think. That's going to be my focal image. We're going to do some background stamping. I have a couple of stencils. These are both from Paper Artsy. And also, I've just got some random paper. But I'm going to start with, I cut a piece of 4x6 music note scrapbook paper. And that's going to be my base. And we will take it from there. And then I've also just picked out two colors for my background. A smoky paprika and an ochre. Basically, an orange and a yellow to start out with and let's see where this leads me right so basically all I've done is torn some scrapbook paper I did switch my paper and I used a German print paper that way the good news is it the words aren't going to distract me because I don't know what they say and I've just again I've just torn paper randomly I used three of each because three makes our eyes happy but it's pretty much going to get covered up in the next layer but that's a good start good place to start. Right, so I've got a couple of cosmetic sponges. I've put my paints on a piece of deli paper that I've been using. And what's fun about this is then I will cut these pieces up and use them in other projects. So I'm creating while I, you know, while I paint. And I've added a bit of a spritz of water because I do want this to have a little bit, I don't want it to be perfect. I just want it to to sort of move a bit. I want there to be, I just want it to be a little bit lighter, a little bit translucent. I might even spritz the paper with water, even though one of the challenges with that will be that, you know, this is not designed really. It's just a piece of scrapbook paper, but I like it if it gets wonky. And so I want to put a little bit of color down there was my idea. And then I'm going to come along with this. And I just want a couple of little images so I'm not going to use the big numbers necessarily and just put some more of that down more of that color down and so I immediately use the big image but just to get get that down there maybe put a couple here it's a small little five let's use that and I'm just pouncing away not again these these are layers so some of this is not going to show up, um, but that gives me a nice little background to start with. Then what I thought is I would take the reverse of this. So this is what had been pounced down, but it is acrylic paint. So it's probably not there anymore. So I'm just going to do this and maybe I'll spritz that with a bit of water. And I'll come along and just put that. So I'm kind of using it as a stamp. And pounce that down like that and then I should get oh I didn't get much of an image so that's one of the challenges acrylic paint dries really quickly so I've got some ink I have some prism in fire coral which is should be just about the same color and I can come along with this and just ink that up a little bit and then give it a spritz of water and do the same, do the same thing. That should give me more of an image. There we go. So it just gives me sort of a fine, fine line, but that's all right, that's enough. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with this yellow, take another craft sponge, come in with that yellow, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna bring my stencil back, but I'm gonna use the opposite. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use the same one. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it on top. And then I'm going to come, I'm going to lay that stencil back up on top. And I'm just going to go over with the yellow in some of the other spots. And again, just very random. Kind of giving it, you can't even really see the yellows. They're both translucent, which is kind of nice. And I might come up in here a little bit too. Do a bit of that yellow. 
So again, we're looking at it going, eh, that doesn't do much. Well, it's the first layer. I kind of like these three little squares over here, so I'm going to pop those in as well. And that's a fun thing when you have your stencils, look at the imagery that you have because there's quite often you can just use pieces of the stencil. But I think that's a pretty good background to start with. So now I'm coming in with my stamp, my focal image from this set. And what's interesting about these stamps, even though they have that plastic coating, which traditionally won't attach to a block, acrylic block, it's actually sticky. So it does attach very nicely. So I got my nice crisp image. I stamped it with uh, Jet Black Archival so I get that watercolor or I get the um, permanent so I can watercolor on top of it. And what I'm going to do is grab a couple of acrylic paints from Fresco Finish from Paper Artsy and I'm going to water them down. I've used warm colors here. So warm orange and yellow is the sun. That's a really good way of remembering. So I'm going to come in with some cools for my flower or for my feather and that will help it pop. So I'm going to probably pick blues and purples just because that, I think that would make a nice, maybe a little bit of pink. We'll see. So I'm coming along with three colors. I have Byzantine, Cherry, Cerise en Francais, and South Pacific. The nice thing about the Paper Artsy is that you'll see, you can see they hand paint every bottle. So you can see this is translucent and these two are semi-opaque which means there's still a bit of translucency I can see through. This is a darker color, so even though this looks like it's less transparent, it's because the color is very dark. I'm gonna just do the same thing. I've got my little palette here. I'm gonna add some, spritz some water, and I'm going to loosely paint my feather that has been very, very simply fussy cut out. So I'll just, again, take my paintbrush, And I'm going to spritz some water, get my paintbrush wet. And the goal is to just, I just want it to be, oh yeah, like that. See how that's a wash more than a, and I do want to work a bit quickly just because this is still acrylic paint. So it's not, it might dry a little bit faster. Come in with my finger to blend that out. And you can see what's fun is I get another color. And I can also bring in some more paper just to use up that paint. And I come in with that purple. And if it's a bit much, I can wet that and I can come along with a rag and kind of dab that up because again I kind of want I do want that watercolor look so I think I'm getting getting it pretty well then I'm just going to use this scratch piece of paper to put color down and this can be another background this can be a die cut shape I, I like doing that you know sort of creating more options so let's see I like a little more of that pink I think in here I'm liking that. And you see how the where the pink and the so it's um, cherries and South Pacific have blended. Got that really nice purple going on. So that's kind of fun. Again, I've just used regular cardstock. You could use watercolor paper, sometimes a better idea, but I just grab what I had lying around. And see, that's what happens. That like that, the watercolor paper is pulled up, so I've lost some of that image. But that's okay. I like that. I'm good with that. All right, let's get to the next step. I'm gonna set my feather aside, and I'm sure that this is dry, so I won't mark up what I have going. But to do is to utilize this really cool bark image, and just put 
some maybe some very faint marking in there. I'm trying to figure out, I'm going to bring in my feather. It's still a little damp, but the idea is I'm going to have my feather here. I've got my quote of some sort, and I'd like to add this in, and I'm just not quite sure. I like the idea of doing it this way in a few random spots, but I think I'm going to go, I'm actually, I was going to use paint, but I think I'm going to go with a, with a, ink. I think I'm going to go with an ink. One of the things I like to do is swatch out my colors and Prism Ink has uh, this swatch card. So what, what that does when I come to a position like this, I can take my, you know, my swatch, my sample to see, oh, that would be kind of dark, but I know that if I stamp it off, it'll work. The green it might be too much. This might be interesting. The red brick. Thunderclouds a little bit lighter. But it gives me an idea of what the color will look like once it's actually down. And so I think I'd rather go with the cinnamon swirl now that I look at that. So that's where it becomes helpful. So I'm just going to take this and stamp my stamp. I'm not going to put it on a block. I'm just going to ink that up and I can come along here to see how dark that's going to be. That's all right. It's not too dark. So my idea is just to get some very faint, you know, background, get some background color going or get, just get a little background texture rather. I'm going to come in here with a couple. One of the things I really like using for this technique is a like number stamps or alphabets. That's so always fun. And I can turn that around and it just gives that a little bit of texture. It's looking pretty busy now, but once we get the imagery down, it'll knock that back. The other thing I can do if I find my background is too bright, I can also come along with a gesso, a coat of light, a light sort of gesso wash, and that would knock all of those colors back a bit. So I don't know that I'm going to do that. I also do like this stamp. I'm thinking of putting that stamp there. We'll see. So we've got our feather and our words. So I have decided that I'd like a little more to my background image. So what I think I'm going to do is take that same stamp and just stamp it a few times behind my focal point. And I'm going to use the same color palette. So I'm going to grab a navy. And unfortunately, I don't have a prism purple. But I have a Lavinia teal. So I think that would work nicely. And I'm just going to, again, sort of randomly ink that up. And then, and then I'm going to try and avoid where I put those colors. And really, you should start with the darker color for this technique, but that's all right. I'm just going to come along with that teal. And I think I will do a test just in case my colors are too dark. And that just gives me another image. Sorry, I'm shaking the camera. That just gives me another image to work with, but that's pretty, that's very pretty. And then, you know, see, I think that'll look nice. I almost like the darkness of it, but you can see the two tones, how we've got the navy and then the teal, that teal's so pretty. So I'm going to come along again and just do the same thing. Put my navy along one side and the teal along the other. These Lavinias are very juicy stamp pads, so it does not take much. And then I'm gonna stamp that. Yeah, that's what it needs. And then I'm gonna come in again and stamp it again. Just a little bit extra. Give that 
give that feather a place, kind of a little frame. Yeah, I like that better. Of course, this ink is wet. And I am going to do another one. I, as I said, I like doing extra so that I can cut them out and have them there. It's a great way to bring images, especially if you're, you know, going on vacation or got a bit of cream card here. Then I can, instead of bringing a stamp, I can just bring that image. And then I'm going to spritz a bit of water. Ooh, that was a lot of water. I wanted to do a fine mist. And I'll do another one, and it'll be more of a watercolor. See how pretty that is. And I can probably still get one, one more. Oh, I could probably get another one. So that's just a way to use your ink, not wipe it off. And I'll cut those out and I'll put them in a little stamp folder I have. And then when I go on vacation, I just grab that and I've got images on the go. So here's where I'm at. I have my card with my background feathers. And, you know, you could play around with the the direction of these feathers and put them over here. Or, I mean, there's all kinds of, you could just have a few little feather tips. But um, I like that. Another thing, if you don't like, which it doesn't bother me, but if you want your stamping to be darker, then all you need to do is stamp your image. Like, I could color this out, and then I could go back to another piece of paper. Just recreate the painting let that dry and then stamp on top of it. And then that would give me a darker image, but I'm okay with it. I think that's perfectly fine. And I am gonna stamp this fabulous little sunshine. I think I'm gonna do it in the black again, because I really want that to show up. And the only thing, it might not work because I'm putting it on acrylic paint number one, which archival works well on acrylic paint. But I'm also putting it on, you know, this has got layers going on. But if it doesn't work out, I can always stamp it again on white cardstock. See, I can't even see that because there's a lot going on behind it. So what I'm going to do is just stamp that on a piece of white. Just happen to have a scratch piece here that should do. And I'll cut that out. You can use a stamp platform as well if you want to get a good image ensure your imagery is good yeah that'll be better and the white and i could come in and color that in yellow but i think i'll probably just keep that in white so i have cut that out i've adhered that down i've adhered my feather down and i've used cosmic shimmer quick grab glue which is actually a nice fairly strong glue perfect for this kind of wet when we're working on wet it's good to use a wet glue and now i'm just going to come with my again this is one of my favorite colors in the prism line is the french navy and i'm going to edge that and then i'm going to do the same thing with my quote that i have here but it, like as i said i want to I want to put encourage acts of kindness. So I'm just going to chop that S off. And I just sort of think I'm gonna do encourage. I'm gonna use the words separately. And I am putting these down just to sort of audition, as they say, where the where my words want to go. And th this doesn't show up very well, so I will take my inker, my ink pad, and I'm just sort of doing it at a bit of an angle. And what that does, if you do it straight up and down, you just get the edge like that. But if I want more of a feathering, you just 
turn the angle of your ink pad a little. And then that would be great. All right, I'll be back. So I've come in and I've added my words. I've overlapped them from my feather to sort of tie them in together after having inked the edges. And I do find that my background is a bit too bright. So I'm going to knock it back a bit using gesso, as I said. And I've just got some Just So Good in white from Indigo Blue. And I've, again, I've added a bit of a spritz of water. I can come along and see if my consistency, I guess it's better to do it on a printed image, for example. Just see if that, so the idea is I just want it to knock it back a bit. So I am going to just water that down a bit more and maybe dab off a bit. I don't want to get my feather, which I did. And as I go, if I, again, if I find that that's too much, I can just brush it back. But I just want to come in here and get that background a bit. The background's just too bright. The gesso will dry a little bit lighter. I have to be careful not to get my feathered images because I did not use an archival ink on that. And that's one of the reasons why I usually do use an archival ink is because when you're doing mixed media, quite often you don't know what, what your next step is gonna be. And so, if you always use, I feel like I've knocked about too much. If you always use archival, then you know it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's better. Just gave that a spritz of water. Of course, it's gonna smudge that up a bit. But again, that's okay. Missed a spot up here. Being careful of that feather. There we go. That's a lot better. And again, you can come in. Fingers are very good tools for this sort of thing. Bring any in. Because some of the imagery is a bit darker. The words are a bit darker. But there we go. I like that a lot better. And if you like the one previous, all you have to do is not add the gesso. So I'm left with something such as this. I did add in a little more. I kind of mucked this up. I went back in and added in some of the yellow that I lost because I knocked it back too much. And then I just came in with a pen that was a similar color to my ink. And where I kind of lost some of that detail on the edge that got wet, I just drew it back in. And now what I'm gonna do is come in with another pen to sort of do some doodling. And I just, I find my images just aren't, you know, they're not popping enough. So I'm going to just, again with my quote, this is a V-ball. It's one of my favorite pens for this because for whatever reason, it just keeps on going. V-ball 0.05 by, no, it's by, just V-ball, Pilot. So I've just kind of mucked around with that. And I might even just do a little bit on the edges. I kind of lost some of my distressing, but I can bring that back in. And all this does is just sort of help, again, help those images pop a little. I could outline that five in a sketchy way. Now, I feel like I want to come back with that, this as well, and maybe do a little bit darker. So I'm going to get that roasted coffee 
And what I'm going to do is stamp off with it. So I'm going to take my image and I'm going to stamp off first so I don't end up with it too, too dark. But that's, that's good. I think we need a little more something, something. All right. You can see the difference the outlining makes. Like that. And I can also go in with lighter colors to, to sort of highlight some of those images. Even if I just go in with a pencil. Just to give it some, some mark making. That adds a little to it. So I did decide I want to come in and highlight some of my stamp because I find it's just a little light because, you know, it is supposed to be the focal image. So I'm just taking that pen and I'm just, all I'm doing is redrawing the lines that already exist. And then another thing I've done is I've come in with that same pen, but I've smudged it to sort of Again, it's just sort of, I don't know, I feel like it needs something, something. So again, I don't want to make these be focal images, but I want to just add I think that adds a little bit. Yeah, I like that better. And then I'm going to shadow this guy as well. All right, I think that is it. I think that's it. So thank you for joining me. Hope you get to make a card yourself and I hope you get the chance today to get inky. Have a great day.